Yeah. In this uh, session, let's focus uh, on the interest rate uh, term structure models where volatility and distributions play an important part, which are primarily differentiated based on volatility and distribution. Because in the earlier uh, session, whatever the interest rate uh, term structure models which we have discussed, whether it is uh, uh, with, with no drift or with the drift or uh, wholly where uh, time dependency uh, drift or vasi sec where uh, we were talking about mean reversion in the drift so these models they were all based on different differences with respect to the drift but if we see in all these models the volatility was more or less similar like the volatility was generally sigma dw kind of a form where dw was a normally distributed random variable which means here the distribution is also constant across the volatility uh, sigma is uh, a single uh, constant one across so most of the models uh, that we have uh, looked at in the drift chapter were primarily having uh, a, a constant sigma dw kind of a behavior though overall when we were uh, incorporating them along with the drift we were uh, seeing that overall volatility of the interest rates is uh, coming down as the as the time is uh, uh, time is passing otherwise uh, as we were seeing in sigma dw kind of a scenario they were more or less constant across but now in this chapter whatever the models that we are going to deal with right we are uh, going to uh, deal with uh, 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 again uh, a kind of models called cox ingersoll ross model or the basic basic time dependent volatility model we'll talk about uh, time dependent volatility model we'll look at cox ingersoll ross model we'll talk about uh, log normal model this is what is uh, the distribution is changing whereas the drift based model the focus was more on uh, normal distribution itself whereas here we are uh, changing to the models which are based on log normal kind of a distribution a cox ingersoll ross model so these kind of models across the space they have some differences with respect to the volatility they don't uh, assume constant uh, volatility across the period there are some changes uh, in the volatility probably uh, they may be in combination with the drift also or even without the drift but our focus is primarily the change with respect to the volatility so the first of that category models is called as a time dependent uh, volatility model which probably if we see this is okay lambda of t which means time dependent drift is there the change in the interest rate over a short period of time dt is a factor of time dependent drift which means the lambdas could be different for each of the periods which was similar to our holy model earlier but the key difference being in our holy model we were just putting sigma dw means the sigma was assumed to be constant for the entire period but here in the time dependent volatility model even the volatility is time dependent if the volatility also i would be doing a modeling of the term structure that is how this is becoming slightly more flexible compared to the holy model and generally this sigma t we can have various uh, models uh, or various mechanisms to come out with this uh, sigma t but uh, the more time decaying uh, version of uh, sigma t people take it as uh, sigma into e power minus alpha t this is a parameter alpha 
which talks about the decaying factor sigma is uh, probably the initial uh, volatility probably in the first year at this the current volatility when time to maturity is zero if i put t equal to zero probably i'll end up with the uh, sigma itself so and as the time progresses the volatility will keep coming down so that is why we call it as uh, decreasing volatility as we are approaching more and more towards the maturity period or over the long run probably let me not use the word maturity period over the long run i assume that the volatility is uh, to be more or less uh, constant so that means as time period is increasing the volatilities are also going uh, constant towards uh, a particular value so to generate right uh, if i have to use this approach probably uh, if if i have to use this uh, approach uh, to generate all i can uh, look at is earlier i was using r not if i am talking about uh, or probably uh, if i look at uh, the dr itself in the earlier scenario i was uh, uh, because the volatility is more or less uh, constant we were uh, talking about uh, whatever is the lambda okay let me go back to the excel sheet right if i assume that the lambda is 50% or 0.5% right if the lambda is uh, 0.5% and annual volatility is uh, 1% earlier we were uh, getting the change right if i assume that uh, dw okay let me take it uh, separately with the same values right i'll take all these uh, values right probably for uh, uh, to simplifying i'll take only one lambda lambda i'll take it as 0.5% sigma which is uh, the annual volatility i'll take it as uh, 1% and what else uh, do i uh, require <coughs> alpha right this time i'll take it as uh, let's say 0 0.05 the decay factor some number i can very well uh, take 0 0.05 0 0.1 whatever it is again that is uh, determined based on arbitrage uh, free kind of a scenario itself okay so that's the reason i have parameterized uh, even that aspect and uh, dw dw is uh, more of a normally distributed uh, random variable so i will uh, i will take one normally uh, distributed uh, random variable wherein i am uh, considering i'll take some value norm inverse wherein on a random basis i am considering it with a mean of uh, 0 and a standard deviation of square root of 1 by 12 right so i have got uh, let's say point uh, minus point three three or probably uh, something uh, point two one let's say this is my dw right i am uh, just uh, creating uh, some scenario here so let's assume that my dw which is nothing but uh, a normally distributed random variable so based on this if i had not gone with a time dependency time dependent volatility for the next period what would have been uh, and my current uh, short term interest rate let me assume it as 5% so my dr in this case it would if i had not gone probably using a, a simple drift kind of a model so the the dr would have been the lambda times dt which is lambda by 12 plus sigma times dw so my dr is going to be something like this and uh, probably uh, my interest rate for the next period is going to be r plus dr which is uh, coming out uh, to the extent of 5.26 percent right but if i am going with a time 
dependent kind of a volatility what is the change in dr that i am getting this part is the same lambda times or lambda by t lambda by 12 plus here instead of sigma dw i am getting sigma into e power minus alpha t after one year e power minus alpha t into dw so my dr is actually uh, coming out to 0.25% so because of that what is happening my change in the interest rate or my new interest rate for the next period is actually coming out as 5.25% which is slightly lesser than what is predicted by my constant drift model a regular constant uh, drift model without time dependent uh, volatility but uh, this model where there is a time dependent uh, volatility the the value that i am uh, getting the interest rate that i am uh, getting is slightly lesser means the volatility actually decreases exponentially for the next period it even further goes down in the next period it even further goes down so the volatility is actually uh, going down <coughs> because e power minus t as t is increasing the volatility is actually uh, going down bringing more and more consistency for the long term kind of a scenario so from that standpoint if i have to look at uh, the appropriateness or the effectiveness of this because this model produces uh, different volatilities for different uh, periods any any uh, securities wherein we are talking about multi period cash flows which are based on interest rates the most common tools in that uh, category are caps and floors because in case of caps and floors we have caplets and floorlets which are nothing but the 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 payments are based on how the interest rates are how the current short term interest rates are over the future periods right so the volatility of each of the interest rate plays a very important role so basically whenever i am looking at uh, multi period uh, cash flows which are primarily based on fluctuating or changing interest rates probably time dependent volatility models are really of a great use and what is being uh, said also is there is a lot of similarity between a wasisek model and this model especially if the initial volatility is same see in uh, wasisek also we talk about the mean reversion rate and uh, the mean reversion rate is what will bring down actually the the volatility of the as the time period is progressing the volatility of the interest rate actually comes down drastically even if we have seen uh, one of the examples if we have seen 5.7 after one year probably 5 can become 5.7 after two years this can become 6.2 then 6.7 7.0 you are seeing that there is a kind of a decreasing in all these things and that is what that decreasing thing in all these things is means as the time period is increasing we are observing that the volatility is typically fall in the wasisek model also so just to bring out uh, the similarity or the relationship between the two the time dependent volatility model and the wasisek model what uh, is being derived is if the decay rate decay rate here is e power minus alpha t if the decay rate is same as the mean reversion rate k if both of them are the same we find that the distribution wise 
the Vasisek model as well as uh, the time dependent uh, volatility model will more or less be the same. And at the same time drift also, the, the time dependent, you see when we are talking about uh, the dependent uh, time dependent drift here, lambda of t, if it is the same as the average interest rate path, what is that average interest rate path? We were uh, talking about uh, k times theta minus r dt. If this two are the same, what you will, la if lambda of t will be equal to this part, what we would typically uh, see is the Vasisek model is more or less same as the time dependent volatility model. And because here there is no mean reverting nature, what we would uh, see is this model produces a parallel shift itself with the change in the yield curve, with the change in the short term interest rate, it produces a parallel shift itself. Whereas uh, when we were talking about uh, Vasisek model, it was producing non-parallel shift because uh, for different interest rates, uh, for different interest rates over different periods of time, it is fluctuating in a different manner. So, shift wise, this model can produce a parallel shift whereas a Vasisek can produce non-parallel shift. So, again in comparison with the Vasisek, if I have to talk about whether this model is good or the other one, as I have clearly uh, said, if I am talking about asymmetric payoff models, where the, the focus is on <coughs> fixed income securities or the valuation of the option over an entire period, then probably uh, 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 mean reverting models are really good because the interest rates keep changing for different periods of time. Whereas when the focus is on different time periods and different payoffs at different time periods like your caps and floors, the time dependent volatility models will really be of a good option. But considering all the above models like whether it is time dependent or the ones which are uh, with the drift, something which we have observed in all these models is either I had sigma dw or sigma t dw, right? which means the volatility is either <coughs> constant across or it is different for different time periods. But none of these models are reflecting the volatility based on the actual value means the actual current interest rate R, the actual current short term interest rate R is not playing any role in the volatility either in the basic drift based models or even in the time dependent volatility model. That's a major drawback because in reality, let's say the in current prevailing interest rate is 2% versus 10%, right? And uh, what I could uh, see is in this case, the volatility may be very, very less. The reason being, this interest rate cannot fall below zero. So, it may be fluctuating probably in the range of 1.5 to 2.5 percent. So, the volatility levels are much, much lesser when the actual interest rates are much lower. Whereas, when the actual interest rates are very high, probably I can even have scenario of something like this which means the volatility could be much higher. So, one argument that has come out in this context is the volatility may even depend not just on time period, but it may depend even on the actual value of the interest rates. So, that is one thing. And the other uh, thing which has also been uh, looked at is let's say we are talking about a high inflationary environment there is a chance of the interest rates fluctuating very drastically compared to the period where the uh, inflation is not so high because whenever we talk about uh, the interest rate we figure in an inflation premium also into it if the inflation is very high 
probably uh, the fluctuation in the interest rates is much higher compared to when the inflation is normal which means from the current interest rates there is a dependency on the current uh, actual interest rate on the volatility whereas uh, neither the time dependent model nor the drift based models have incorporated that aspect so to address this we are talking of a couple of uh, other models now which bring into the scenario the dependency on the current interest rate into the volatility model and that is what we are calling as cox ingersoll ross model wherein uh, uh, to a large extent this is reflecting the vasisek model right to a large extent uh, it is reflecting uh, the vasisek model because this is mean reverting as well as instead of just sigma dw it is considering the square root of r the current interest rate it is considering the current interest rate also as a part of the modeling process so going back right going back here when all these numbers were there yeah we were uh, deciding uh, the theta also earlier right uh, so let me just uh, reiterate so if at all i have my k as 0.2 and uh, the long term volatility as let's say 6% we got the value of theta as nothing but long term volatility plus lambda divided by k this is what uh, was our uh, theta value so the theta we got it as 8.5% all right now when i am uh, going with the cox ingersoll ross model right probably cox ingersoll ross model the dr for me is coming out as k times k times theta minus r plus sigma <coughs> sigma times square root of r this is an important point here sigma times the square root of r times the dw assuming that this is the dw so this is going to be my dr going with the cox ingersoll ross model so around 0.75% which means uh, if at all i am going with uh, the estimation of the interest rates using cox ingersoll ross model this is going to give me around 5.75% uh, but remember here the k might be changing because uh, every time i have to uh, find out this uh, k and all this k need not be the same as 0.5 all these things have to be uh, derived based on the market values the equilibrium values so i am uh, looking at uh, the values for all these things arriving at uh, the value of uh, dr and from there adjusting the value of r so this is what is a cox ingersoll ross model and one thing about this model is the short term rates cannot be negative at all <coughs> if we see this as long as the short term interest rate is positive this value will be a positive value and uh, here also whatever is the negative it may not fall below zero so the dr even dr may be negative but the overall short term interest rate cannot be negative at all so that's also one more uh, advantage uh, probably over the uh, traditional model over the traditional uh, no drift kind of model wherein we said the interest rates negative could very much be possible then one more model which is of uh, <coughs> significance uh, in this uh, context is a log normal model again the major uh, difference probably this model is not talking about mean revertibility it is uh, the drift 
the drift is based on some constant uh, multiplier a the current uh, r so the ar is what is contributing uh, to the drift whereas the sigma r dw so the r means uh, the the coxinger sol model was uh, talking about the volatility proportional to the square root of uh, the current interest rate whereas the log normal model is focusing on the volatility proportional to the uh, short term interest rate itself not the square root of the short term interest rate so this is how uh, a typical uh, log normal model is uh, getting uh, addressed again both these here this is uh, primarily assuming that the negative interest rates cannot come out and the interest rates are following a log normal distribution rather than a normal distribution so which means uh, this model uh, is a skewed model skewed to the right and very good to value the out of money options log normal model is quite comfortable in terms of modeling log uh, out of the money option because uh, these are the ones which are very much skewed to the right here in this context we are also uh, dealing with uh, uh, two major variants of a log normal model right in a typical log normal model what did we say whatever was the dr we said ar dt plus sigma r dw now with a deterministic drift if i am calling about uh, a deterministic drift the way this model gets translated is the de the a small change in the log r here we are more focusing on log r because the the the, the logarithm follows a normal distribution we are talking about a log normal model it means that logarithm of the interest rate uh, changes follow a normal distribution so we are actually uh, writing it because this is a deterministic drift we are talking about uh, a of t dt plus sigma dw itself here we are uh, not considering the r as a part of the volatility because we are talking about a deterministic drift kind of a model so more or less this is looking like a holy model except for instead of log instead of r there we had dr equal to this whereas here we talk about whenever we talk about a log normal model with a deterministic drift the only thing is uh, we are modeling log r and not r so which means if at all i have to uh, create an interest rate tree probably i'll start with log r current r and i would be adding log r plus a of t dt plus sigma dw and similarly log r plus a of t dt minus sigma dw these are the logarithms of the interest rate so if i really have to model the interest rates then probably i am taking e power of them so if i am taking e power of them what is it happening e power log r not is actually becoming r not so it is becoming r not into e power a of t dt plus sigma dw and the downside is becoming r not into e power a of t dt minus sigma dw so this is <coughs> this is what uh, the uh, the interest rates are so again if i am taking e power of this the r not so from r not i am getting r not into something uh, as the uh, as the up movement similarly r not into something as the down movement which means what we could uh, see as a key differentiator between the holy model in that and this uh, log normal model is in the holy model we were talking about r not plus lambda of t or a of t just to bring the similarity a of t plus sigma dw r not plus a of t minus sigma dw so this uh, this factor was actually getting uh, added to the current interest rate whereas when we are talking about a log normal model 
the factor is actually getting multiplied with the current uh, uh, current uh, interest rate instead of getting added so that is where we say the drift term is multiplicative instead of being uh, additive in case of this log normal uh, model with a deterministic drift and the other scenario log normal model with a mean reversion probably the most complicated model but almost completely flexible because this also says the change in the logarithm of the short term interest rates okay here we are having a k of t means uh, the the mean reversion factor also changes with time and mean reverting also logarithm of theta of t means uh, this uh, long term average short term rate also changes with time minus logarithm of r the current uh, short term interest rate this is multiplied by dt plus sigma of t dw probably most complicated because one the volatility is time varying and uh, the long term average short term rate is changing with time the mean reversion factor is changing with time so this is the most flexible model otherwise called as the black karan karasinski model wherein all these are dependent on time and uh, there is a mean revertibility behavior also so it combines the vasisek model with more uh, uh, time dependency is being uh, built into it it uses a uh, time dependent uh, volatility model it clubs all of them and also it is using the log normal means there is no scope for a negative value and to the corresponding uh, interest rate there is uh, the drift factor is multiplicative rather than being uh, additive so all these things are built into the model but uh, to arrive at the values and to create a model using the black karaskinski model uh, is a very uh, tedious thing because determining all these various uh, k of t is theta of t is is a kind of a time consuming and effort consuming kind of a process and just like your vasisek model because of this mean reverting behavior it does not produce Uh, a recombining kind of a binomial tree right uh, wherever the mean reverting behavior uh, exists uh, uh, a recombining binomial tree cannot be produced so even this model will produce a non recombining uh, binomial tree wherein i may have to again uh, recombine it by doing those adjustments which we have done in the vasisek model average the middle values then instead of taking a 50% up and 50% down kind of scenario you consider some probability of going up and other probability of uh, going down all those things have to be considered and derived uh, and you can derive the the interest rates as well as the probabilities and that's how we can uh, build the interest rate tree using this black karaskinski model all right so this is uh, more and more uh, tedious we may have to spend more and more time in terms of understanding uh, the behavior of this uh, particular uh, model but at least uh, from a conceptual standpoint you need to understand what are the key differences that are existing across all these models initially we started off with a very basic uh, no drift versus uh, drift kind of a model then time dependency drift model then uh, <coughs> we talked about uh, vasisek model where we were focusing on uh, mean reversion in terms of the drift then slowly moved on uh, to apart from the drift also looking at time dependent volatility and again incorporating in that volatility also the volatility based on the original uh, short term interest rates where in uh, cir model as well as uh, 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 log log normal kind of models were uh, looking at incorporating the actual interest rate also as a part of uh, as a part of the change and finally looking at log normal uh, model with a deterministic drift as well as mean reversion which is a black karakinski model so you have to understand primarily what are the key differences that are existing across each of these uh, models 
and how we can uh, use for what kind of how we can use each of these uh, models to generate our interest rate trees i hope uh, this session has given you uh, that basic uh, decent level of uh, insight into the understanding of the various uh, interest rate uh, models using uh, drift volatility as well as uh, uh, distribution as the various uh, factors if you have any further uh, queries regarding the same you can very well uh, get in touch with me by giving me a call on the number that i have uh, provided there or you can even uh, send in an email at mumsidhar@pacegurus.com i can very well uh, get back to you and give you a detailed explanation of each of these things thanks a lot uh, for listening uh, to this uh, session thank you very much